Hi everybody, uh, my name is Dr. Roni. This is Liliana Partita. We're here to talk today about anti-aging and the integrative approach to anti-aging. And we'll use the term from the inside out, right? So one of the first things that I'll say about anti-aging, this concept, right? Because you hear it, what does that mean? You know, they talk about medical anti-aging, they'll talk about using hormones for anti-aging, which are all good things, right? But really what we wanna understand is Anti-aging really is optimal health at the cellular level that takes place over a lifetime, right? So when the cells can, basically this term, they can repair and replace faster than they can break down, that's when you're gonna create anti-aging, right? At the cellular level. So we wanna paint that picture that anti-aging is at the cellular level. Yeah, is that fair, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes. So there's a lot of, uh, I'll use the term gimmicks or quick fixes uh, that are out there that say, hey, anti-aging, right? Even skin products, which I'm actually a fan of. However, there's a two part to that. It's what you do to the skin, but then internally how the skin is manifesting. And if your cells are working really, really well, right? Because they're not having, Liliana mentioned before we got on, oxidative stress, free radical damage, right? They're not in, there's not a lot of inflammation in the body. What's going to happen, just using skin as an example, your skin's going to be really, really good for you as you age, right? So again, whether it's skin or whether it's how you feel and anti-aging using symptoms, right? As a guide, it should be, as you get older, you should not get tired, right? right? You should not be inflamed and sore and achy. Your muscles should not hurt, right? You should be vibrant, right? You're Energetic. Not weight. Yeah, you shouldn't just pour on weight for no reason, right? These are all symptoms that there's there's something going on metabolically in your system that's causing your cells to degenerate and break down faster than they can repair, and that's where the aging process really happens, right? Absolutely. So it's at this cellular level that we want to talk about. Unfortunately. There's no quick fix, yeah. right? That's, that's the bear, or we'll be the bearer of bad news. There's no, oh, if I just do this one thing, then I'm going to create anti-aging, right? So I use, I use a sports figure as an example. You hear me talking about it on, on different uh, videos that we've done. There's a quarterback in the NFL, his name is Tom Brady. Right? He's 44 years old. He's one of the oldest quarterbacks in history at this point and he's still putting up MVP-like numbers. He's phenomenal. Now, why is that? About So I read his story, went through it, and it parallels what we're talking about today. About 10 or 12 years ago, he got involved with a trainer that will talk about, has talked to him about the things that we're gonna go over today. And his trainer basically did a few things for, them, for him. He put him on a diet that is very anti-inflammatory, right? So, I mean, he's hardcore, and we'll talk about it, He's very hardcore during the season, plant-based, uh, very low inflammatory foods. He sticks to the regimen almost exactly. He's very regimented, right? So the foods, as Liliana will tell you all the time, are probably the number one indicator of aging, yep. right? Definitely. Because they're inflammatory. So we want to cover that. The second thing that he does is his workouts are designed to create lengthening. Right? So as we age under a microscope, the tissues shorten. And when they shorten, we lose range of motion and mobility. When we do that, there's things that form in there, right? Chemicals that form that create pain and aches. So the workouts are designed to lengthen and create good movement through full ranges of motion. They call it functional movement patterns, right? Not just up and down, side to side, but different planes of movement. So he does that. And then the third thing he does, he takes supplements that are designed to keep inflammation at the cellular level low, because the more the body's inflamed, the quicker it will degenerate. So what I wanna make two points. One is, and Liliano will back me up on this, is that your doctor may tell you, oh, well, it's normal, you're just getting older, right? right? I wanna make this point so abundant, I do this with every patient, what they're telling you is not normal. It's common, okay? Because that's what they see every day because people aren't really necessarily taking care of their, self, their health at a cellular level. So it's common, but it's not normal. 
Normal aging is feeling good, vibrant, vivacious daily. Not having aches and pains, not being fatigued, like Liliana said, not putting on weight. That's normal. But we're so conditioned to think that we just, as we age, we should break down and degenerate. Exactly. Yes. We, right? Absolutely. I mean, you see it all the time yeah. where people are like, wow, the doctor just said this is just a part of it. Right. Not true. Not that, true. That's really the biggest point I want to make is the, uh, of everything is to make sure you understand common versus normal. Okay. And most of, most of the people that watch here come here go, oh, I totally get that. Right. You know, exactly. so, so don't just accept it. That's the big thing. Yeah. Right. So when we start looking at, at the cellular level and Liliana, we talked about this, what you put into your body is probably the number one indicator. You said it last night on the cancer class, right. the number one indicator of how you're going to age. Is oh, that oh, absolutely. Right? I mean, when you study the centurions, uh, you know, that live to be 110, you know, you look at their lifestyle, not only is it really active, mm -hmm. right? Because they're constantly walking in the villages and, um, uh, but also too, is that they don't eat that much animal protein. Right. So they live more on what we would consider a semi pescatarian type of a diet, which is a very, uh, of a Mediterranean diet. And so I, I would say that one thing that we'll all agree in science will agree with is the one, uh, factor for aging. Uh, if you want to slow it down is to not have so much of a caloric intake. That's right. I mean, kind of think about it as we get older, one, we are uh, no longer what we call in childbearing age. So in all reality, our body is meant to start breaking us down because in re what are we contributing in as far as uh, continued population? So it's almost like we've been, you know, self-programmed that when our bodies uh, begin to become acidic, then oftentimes what happens is as we age, we don't have the energy and we say, well, I'm retired, so I'm retired from the kitchen. So all of a sudden we're not eating all those beautiful, wonderful, green, mineral rich, water rich foods. And um, so then again, you're accelerating the aging even, even further. I always say when we need it the most, this is when we retire from the kitchen, when we're breaking down the fastest. And so just, I would say, you know, one of the important things as we age, we don't need as much food. And this is why I love intermittent fasting, right. you know, for myself, you know, I'm 63 years old, going to be 64 soon. And, um, you know, my whole mindset is to be, and I said, I don't mind aging just so long as I don't look at it and I don't feel it. Right. 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 Uh, but again, how you live your life matters. As dad said, it's not just all of a sudden you get to a point point, you're like, look at yourself in the mirror and you're going, Oh my God, where did I go? You know, I've just grayed myself out. My hair is gray, you know, oftentimes premature gray because of the, uh, tremendous amount of stress that we're under. Uh, but at the same time, it's just like, now, well, how can I fix this? Rather than, you know, living a lifestyle, you know, what we would just consider in right action, um, that we just are aging gracefully right. without having to have all of these, um, you know, methods right. that we end up spending billions of dollars right. yeah, yeah. on, billions you know, this industry right. uh, for the creams and things that really, you know, you end up in a disappointment. So I think that uh, one of the most important things is people don't drink enough water. Mm -hmm. So their skin's not hydrated. Mm -hmm. And you know, kind of think to yourself, you need to drink half of your body weight in water. But at the same time, if you're eating a lot of watery foods, that'll also apply to the amount of, uh, of liquid that you're consuming. Just so long things are not caffeinated, they will still be considered water. Even, you know, Pellegrino, a bubbly water, it sure. still will alkaline you. And so since our body is aging, which becomes a more acidic state, mm -hmm. we need to take in more of these vegetables and uh, on a daily basis. And so if we kind of looked at it is the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning, and this is kind of my religion, mm -hmm. is I drink at least 16 to 32 ounces, you know, no matter what, before anything touches my lips, not the coffee, not the tea, what have you. Um, and then, you know, for me, I intermittent fast. I don't, I have a bulletproof drink, uh, either with coffee or with matcha tea that I put a, some fat in there, whip it up in the blender, like a cappuccino. Uh, and, and that's all I have. Uh, so there's no protein in it and no carbohydrates in it. So my body continues to use fat for fuel until my next meal. And so again, as we age and unfortunately those little extra pounds come on for lack of movement, yeah, you know, lack yeah. of interest in life, so many things. Um, and then of course, lack of hormones, which I want you to yeah, talk about, absolutely. which I think is essential. Sure. Um, is that, uh, 
this lack of interest in life, all of a sudden now the it, the kitchen becomes a lot brighter mm -hmm. because of the fact that, you know, we're not, we're, we're emotional creatures. And so when we've retired and, and we don't have purpose, our kids are gone, all of a sudden now we're looking for things outside of us to make us feel good. Mm -hmm. And so the food becomes their your drug of choice. Right. And so again, when patients come to see me, you know, the first thing I always want to know is, you know, how... Uh, how happy they are. How do they live their life? You know, what can we do to inspire them for continued learning? Because I think also, too, wouldn't you agree, Dan, that as we age, we think we know it all to some degree, oh, that we sure. don't need to keep learning and keep discovering. Sure. I mean, think about a child. They're in wonderment all the time. Wouldn't it be beautiful for us to stay in wonderment all the time? You know, what are we learning now? I mean, when we start to get older, we should start becoming more spiritually yeah. engaged, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I mean, that's kind of look at all in terms of the chronological age of all countries. You know, your youth, then you go to school, then you get married, you know, you yeah. have a job, then you get married, and then it's community, and then it's really kind of devoting yourself more on a spiritual, internal kind of level, mm -hmm. uh, and that keeps the vitality up. But can yeah. you talk a little bit about hormones? Yeah. I think that is so essential as yeah. we age. Yeah, definitely. And, and I'll, I'll parlay a little bit on, on what Lil said. So there, there's blue zones, right? Yeah. So what she said, the centurions, they study why certain uh, demographics live longer, right? And they live consistently over 100. Yeah. Okay. The number one factor is they don't eat for pleasure. They eat for survival, which means they take in significantly less calories comparative to say the average American, yes. right? The second part, she hit the nail on the head, they move a lot. So I will tell you one thing that I learned early in my career is movement is life, yeah. right? Your joints need that. They need to be elongated. They need to be moved. Those mechanoreceptors in your joints feed your brain. So when you're not moving, guess what's starting to degenerate? Your brain. Yeah, now, absolutely. getting into that, what happens from the neck down is going to determine your brain. So if we have metabolic dysfunction, everything from inflammation to blood sugar imbalances, to hormonal imbalances, not only will it affect our body, it's going to affect our brain significantly. So movement and less eating are the two best anti-aging things that I could probably, would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then the type of exercise is really important. Absolutely. Because as we age, unfortunately, Unfortunately, since our hormones are starting to go down, especially testosterone for men and women, all of a sudden our muscles start depleting and they we do. aren't able to lay down that muscle mass anymore. And so weight training becomes imperative, especially for women, yeah. because gravity has to tend to pull things down, right? And our body's going to utilize the energy, the, the energy that's easiest, which is our muscles as we age. And so weight training is uh, super important. Also training, for the osteoporosis awesome. too. Yeah, absolutely. Because Wolf's Law says bone remodels to stress. So if I do light squats, light lunges, especially for the lower half, because the hips are one of the areas that, that get osteoporotic. Right. So we need to do weight bearing exercises of some sort. And that could just be up and down the steps. It could be holding onto a chair and doing a lunge or a squat if you can, but some of those weight bearing exercises are going to allow the bones to remodel properly, right? right? And, you, and one thing too, you know, in a, on a hormonal level, right. uh, of course the exercise is great because, you know, it, there's impact to the skeletal system, which, you know, just allows for that yep. remodeling. Uh, so it was interesting because I went into menopause when I was 47 years old. And prior to that, I had done a DEXA bone scan and I had 30 year old bones. I was very excited. You know, I've been an athlete my whole life. So that input pact has laid down, you know, a good, strong skeletal system. And so I really didn't have any menopausal symptoms, to be quite honest with you. I didn't have hot flashes. I wasn't tired because I live a very vibrant life. I eat sure. right. I think right as much as I can. I exercise right. So I didn't have a whole lot of symptoms. So I didn't really think hormonal replacement was necessary for me. I was feeling terrific, right? Sure. I wasn't gaining weight or doing anything of that nature. But two years later, when I went to go have a bone density done again, I was in osteopenia mm -hmm. for the lack of progesterone, yeah, okay? Right. And it started affecting the fact that I couldn't sleep very well anymore. Mm -hmm. And so hormones are essential 
uh, in regards to maintaining youth yeah. essential. Yeah. Uh, your skin, you know, lack, right. lack, lack of testosterone. People say, I have crepey skin now. The first thing I think of testosterone, yeah. right? Yeah. And or, you know. The uh, endocrine system yeah. in general, right? The endocrine, like for example, when you have so much stress in your life, yes. and you were talking That's about, you know, the body about, yeah. steals the, the was progesterone. Or yeah. progesterone. They call it a steal, yeah. right? So the body, if you have, if you have either elevated cortisol levels, which in a, is in an acute stress response, or you have a low cortisol level, which is called a functional adrenal fatigue, your body needs to keep up with that cortisol, right? That's your stress hormone. So it's a hierarchy hormone. Right. So the body's like, I, we need that. What it will do is start to steal other hormones and convert them into cortisol. So stress is going to disrupt your hormone balance significantly. And one of the things that gets used, or one of the hormones, I should say, is progesterone. They call it the progesterone steal. Now, that's not exact, so there's other, you know, there's other parts to that, but to keep it simple, you're taking this to keep up with cortisol if there's a chronic stress response, right? Which means it's gonna drop your progesterone levels low. Now, there's several major issues with that, right? Number one, as Liliana touched on, progesterone is responsible for bone building, right? So estrogen is responsible for going in and eating away old bone. Progesterone uh, is responsible for going in and, and really dictating the cell, at the cellular level, these cells, to go in and put new bone into the old bone, right? So keeping it simple, your long bones of your leg, every 14 years, they're new. Your spinal bones, every seven years, they're new. So every day, there's a process of breaking down and building up. Mm -hmm. When you start to lose progesterone, estrogen starts to dominate, right? And estrogen dominance is going to cause more bone breakdown and not enough bone building. So that's what leads to osteopenia and or osteoporosis. It's, a, it's driven primarily by hormone imbalance. We're taught vitamin D, calcium. They're important. Don't get me wrong. But progesterone drives bone building significantly. And wouldn't you say that that would also contribute to the abdominal weight gain? Absolutely. Because when we, and like Absolutely. for men especially, right? Because when they start turning over and they're not producing the testosterone or, or they don't That's have correct. the DHEA, all of a sudden they they become estrogen dominant. And you'll notice that they're that they're changing. They're starting to get gynomastica, which is you know breast actually, right? And all belly of a sudden belly. now that pregnant belly, and it's become, it's become commonplace. And so we really want to just, you know, say to ourselves is that how uh, do I want to, you know, feel, That's right. it, you know, it doesn't matter how old we are. But again, when we're able to be mobile and we're at our right, our right weight, it's easy to be able to go through life uh, unencumbered by the stressors yeah. of, of aging. It's homeostasis. Absolutely. You're, you're creating that balance. But for a, for a video like this, it's making you aware of where those imbalances can come that are going to accelerate the aging process. Hormones are a big deal. So we talked about the imbalance created um, related to bone. Liliana touched on the hormone imbalance that is created that will allow more fat building instead of fat breakdown. So when you get into the estrogen dominance, right, right and low progesterone, it, to give you an example, estrogens are given by farmers to their uh, livestock to blow them up. Estrogen is a major fat producer of the body, right. right? And then when we're stressed, we're gonna store fat via a number of biochemical reactions, if you will, that's going to store fat for, because the body thinks you're gonna need it at some point. Right. So there's this sixth sense that happens, but it's all created a lot of times because of what's going on over here, right? This endocrine system is often secondary or tertiary as far as cause, right? It's not primary, it's byproducts. So everything from the way we eat to our stress, right, to, to, to our cortisol, our insulin, which is blood sugar, that starts to get off. Now, all of a sudden, we're not only in a degenerative phase because we're creating inflammation, but we have hormonal imbalances that are going to also contribute to this. So at least making you aware of those. And then, of course, we can help you. The clinic can help you tremendously in making sure we look at all of these different factors 
on labs right. and see where you are. Yes, right? so important. L like we talked about, as I said in the beginning, this anti-aging thing, it's somewhat simple, but then it's very complex as well. So there's no sil silver bullet. That's there's tough. there's yeah. clinics out there that will say anti-aging and all they do is hormones. Right. Well, if hormones are secondary and tertiary in the process, this is the concept of conventional medicine, by the way. We're gonna band-aid it so you feel better, but we're not gonna worry about upstream, the, the, the secondary cause or the primary cause, right? We're just gonna do this. That, that's not anti-aging. No. It will never work because you're not identifying the causes that created, as an example, the hormonal imbalances, right? So if we're doing this every day, we're out of homeostasis because the causes are there, the hormone balance can only do so much right? You're going to be like, these things don't work. Right. Well, they don't work because there's nothing done upstream. I hope that makes sense. You know, I want to talk a little bit about sugar because yeah, of factor. course, as we get older and we're not cooking as often, uh, we're eating uh, a lot of emotional foods that are, you know, break down to a lot of glucose. Now we all want to keep our memory, right? As we age, let's all age, but let's remember who we are, right? And we want to know our children when they walk in and they call dementia type 3 diabetes, sure. okay? Mm -hmm. And so keeping your blood sugar stable is so important. And unfortunately, as we age on a cellular level, their capacity to function is going to be less anyway as yeah. we age, right? Yeah. The yeah. Ter the ter uh, deterioration. Uh, so a lot of people at the age their blood sugar level goes up They're not really doing anything different, but their blood sugar starts to go up They're what we call their hemoglobin a1c and that's the marker over a three-month period um, So you say, I'm not doing anything different I, I, I am not eating different sugars or, or eating too, you know junk food and so then when we start to look at it even further You know, it's the fact that um, What they are eating they say I'm not eating any more food, but what they are eating are foods that really aren't sustaining life right, force. Right, right. And um, they're not moving as much right. and they're bored. So they're, you know, when they are eating, they're eating mostly satisfying, rather nurturing food. They're not drinking enough water. So all of these things are super important is to maintain your uh, your blood sugar stable. Right. And so I'd say like, if we could have it at a five, two as we age, sure. that would be great. You know. 4.8 to 6 is kind of the range. So if we can have it somewhere in between that, that would be just absolutely terrific. So it's important for when you are getting your labs that they do a hemoglobin A1C. And this isn't always commonplace when no. they go to a, a normal, right. you know, right. uh, to get normal lab work done, right? Integrative. Agreed. Look at that. Agreed. And, and to touch on that and parlay, there's three things anti-aging but also that will help your blood sugar and we touched on them number one it's what you're putting into the body right so that concept of higher fat moderate protein lower carb but good carbs right yes. that's that's just uh, we'll simplify yeah. it for now the second one is the intermittent fasting right so intermittent fasting is roughly 16 hours to 18 hours of fast time right and about six to eight hours of eating time. So as an example, if I skipped breakfast and started eating at noon, which this is what I do, and then I'll eat till about seven o'clock at night, and I stop eating, and then I fast the rest of the time. I don't eat, unless it's some fats. Yeah. So fats don't convert into sugar, so it keeps the fast going, correct, yeah. right? Yeah. So the second part of eating and then intermittent fasting, because what's gonna happen to your sugar levels they're going to go down because there's no glucose. So the body has to use glucose first for energy. So it'll, it'll go to your glucose in your blood and then it'll, it'll drain your liver stores of glucose, then it'll go to fat. So we're, we're constantly initiating fat burning in the intermittent fasting, but it's also dropping your blood sugar and your insulin levels down, reversing type two diabetes. Even if it's pre-diabetes or not even on paper yet that we see it, but if you're getting tired after meals and you're craving sweets, they're the two main, uh, even if the numbers don't show, you're starting to become insulin resistance, which is going to affect aging significantly. So sugar is a major inflammatory uh, promoter of the body. And then the third one is your movement, mm -hmm. right? So of, of everything that we could tell you, it's what you eat, movement, and intermittent fasting are probably- But don't forget sleep. Well, oh yeah. That's yeah. like, whew. For sure, one. for sure. So let's add that in there, right? So sleep, and Liliana did say water intake, half your body in ounces is a good, uh, good goal to shoot for, especially if you're more active. If you can't get that much and you get three quarters of that, you're still going still to do good, yeah. pretty, pretty good. But sleep, to touch on that, the ideal is about 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's the 
studied ideal because if you go to bed around you know 9 10 even 10 30 ish by about 1 to 2 o'clock your body's going to get into that deep sleep and release copious amounts of something called growth hormone okay. growth hormone is your repair hormone so your body's rejuvenating repairing especially if we have enough growth hormone via sleep right yeah. so so Liliana is right on sleep is a major major factor in that those things that we just mentioned as far as anti-aging so if you're not sleeping well okay something else is going on metabolic yeah it's either Hormones, usually cortisol, endocrine adrenals, related absolutely. your insulin levels are either up or down yeah. you're going through what they call dysglycemia some people bounce between hyperglycemia where they're uh, insulin resistant they get tired and fatigued after meals and then if they don't eat they get hangry jittery shaky right. You're bouncing between hyper and hypoglycemia, and that's creating major, major shifts in other hormones. So insulin is a big one to keep regulated. Cortisol is the other one. That's your stress hormone, right? Thyroid hormone is imperative to aging because that's your metabolic engine. It's your fat burner. It's, it's all that. And then, of course, your progesterone, testosterone, uh, and your estrogens, right? And I'll add in their DHEA, pregnenolone. Vitamin D, and, yeah. D collagen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so There's this can a go lot, on right? and on, which is, which is great because, you know, it's always nice to be able to know that we have an arsenal. That's It's right. all completely natural and, you know, all within our capacity, whether mm -hmm. it's our movement, uh, sleep. As Dr. Rooney said, between 10 and 2 o'clock is when the body goes into repair. And so many of my patients, they say, well, I'm a night owl. You know, I do all my, you know, emails and things like that. And I go, what time do you actually go to bed? And they say, well, anywhere between 1 and 2. Yeah, and I no said, good. well, you've just missed your anti-aging cycle. Right. I right. said, so if you want to age faster, continue to do that. Right. And they just kind of all look at me. In fact, I got a text from a patient the other day. And she said, okay, I'm trying to go to bed early because I don't want to age any faster. And so it's so important. Yeah. So you have to just say... A lot of people say, well, you know, I just can't sleep that much. Well, then there's a hormonal issue, there, there's, there's a metabolic on, issue. Right. Uh, and so, again, we don't want to let these little things go and think that they're normal or natural because your, your friend's going through it or, yeah, right? It's not natural. And so what natural is, is that we age beautifully, but we don't end up looking down at the ground, right? I always say, you know, when we start to get older, we start to lose that bone density. You oh, see yeah. people all looking right. this way. No, we got to keep upright. And this is why you were talking about um, you know, the lengthening of your, mm -hmm. of your muscles so that we can keep supple uh, is essential. Uh, yoga, movement, stretching, anything that, you know, is allowing that fascia to de lengthen. Meditation is probably one of the best methods to reduce uh, stress and cortisol level. And there's been many studies uh, saying that in one week's meditation, the telomere uh, actually lengthens. And this is the way that we would actually gauge the, uh, the, the speed of aging yeah, um, right. for the person. Right. And so imagine, these are all little things that don't cost you any money that you can just be mindful and just say, you know what? I love myself enough to just pay a little attention to how my body is expressing itself. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of, how, how's my weight? Do I feel good? Uh, is my energy good? Is my mental capacity good? Do I have community? Do I have connectedness? Do I, have, good movement? Do right? I, have, do I have inflammation? Right? Yeah, and, yeah and, all, all and, of it. Yeah, and then you just kind of get to the mindset of, is I'm really, am I using food as my drug of enjoyment? And as Dr. Rooney says, is when you eat a meal, you're under the influence of insulin, so there's no fat burning. So if I eat and snack and eat and snack and eat and snack, then throughout the entire day, you have no fat burning capacity till 10 o'clock at night when you're going into repair. So this is why I always tell my patients during their mindset of snacking to snack on a little bit of fat, handful of nuts, some avocado, so that they don't produce that insulin. So we've got some time in there that they're actually accessing Absolutely. fat for fuel. Absolutely. It's essential, especially you, as we age. And you have to turn that pathway on too. So we're so carb heavy in our society, your body doesn't have to access fat for food a lot of times, no. right? Either what we're eating, the amount we're eating, how often we're eating, they all play a factor in whether or not the pathway to take fat for energy is turned on. It doesn't have to work in our society because we're so carb heavy. And let's not forget that Sugar if you heavy. do massive amounts of protein, 
it also can convert yeah. into gl glycogen and glucose that gets stored into the muscles or the fat cells. And so, you know, we have this whole mindset is the big goal, bigger, better, but bigger, better is not good as we age. And, you know, when you're young and you're growing, you need to have a little bit of protein. But as we age, we don't need excessive protein because we don't want anything to grow inside of us or we don't want to go grow outwards. And so minimalizing animal protein is absolutely essential. This is why I like to throw in vegetarian meals. Some days, maybe even say eat animal protein two or three times a week, not necessarily every single day. Sure, yeah, and it is uh, dependent. The, the denominator, if you will, is if you're very still very active and you are doing some, some resistance training, stressing the muscles, you will need a little bit more protein. Yes, absolutely. But, but if, if we're using the, the average American sedentary type of lifestyle, right. we definitely consume too many fats, too many carbs, and too many proteins, for, for sure. Yeah. And probably carbs are way up there. But yeah, if you are active, that might shift a little bit, but, but Liliana is totally right in regards to the amounts, right? right? We probably take in too, too many, okay? Yeah. That'll wrap up uh, the anti-aging video. If you have any questions or concerns, definitely let us know because we'll help walk you through it, right? It's a little complex, but yet somewhat easy too. Yeah, doable. For yeah, sure. it's doable. We, we want to, a lot of times we'll look at labs, we'll see where the deficiencies are, and then we can put you on a on the road to... Anti-inflammatory lifestyle. That's, that's what it is. So again, it's anti-aging is really optimal function. That's what it is. So it's just us identifying where the roadblocks are and starting to help you remove them. And then at the cellular level, repairing, replacing throughout a lifetime, right? Yep. The, the quick ending to this is the average healthy life expectancy in America is about 48. We live now to, to high 70s, almost 80. So we're living longer because of probably medical intervention, but not at a quality, not, quality. not a quality filled life at all. We're degenerating rapidly. So. Hopefully that helps a little bit. If you need uh, Liliana or myself or anybody at the clinic, we'll be happy to help you with this, okay? See you, gang.